Good morning, Mount Jezreel. As we go before the Lord, we ask that you at home in the cyber sanctuary, we ask that you would like, share, whether it be on Facebook, whether it be on Instagram. The Bible says to cast your cares upon him because he cares. And so as we go before the Lord, we pray that you would bring your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Let us go before the Lord. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We love you with our whole heart, for there is no one like you. You are God and God alone, and beside you there is no other. We take advantage of this moment, this opportunity to come before your presence, God, and to bow at your feet, for you are a holy God who sits on a holy throne, and we bless your name. We honor you. We lift you up. We glorify you. We magnify you above all our struggles, above all our problems, above every Everything that we face, we understand and we know, God, that you are able to do anything but fail. And so we take this moment and we bless your name. We lift our hands up and we thank you, God, because as we look back over our life and we think things over, we can truly say that we have been blessed even through the hard times, even through the struggles, even through burdens, even through things that we face, God, that we that would seem insurmountable, God, we understand and we know, God, that you are able to do anything but fail. You are the great God of our salvation and we give you glory. We honor you and we lift your name up for your word says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Move from heart to heart and from breast to breast. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise and we stand in expectancy of your wonders and your power for you are great and you are greatly to be praised. We magnify you. We extol you and we lift you up. We glorify you and we thank you. And now, Lord, as your spirit speaks to us, it is with our whole heart that we'll agree and our answer will be yes to your will and to your way. We thank you. We bless you. And we serve you with a smile. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the redeemed of the Lord shout hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
Come on and clap your hands, everybody. If your testimony is that the Lord is everything to you, don't be ashamed to tell somebody. Lift your voice and let's shout with the voice of Brian.
Now, church, it is time to take it to the Lord in prayer. Let's have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. Join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this day, Lord God. We come to just give you glory and to thank you, Father God. We thank you for the waking up this morning that you just touched all of us, Lord God, with the breath that's in our bodies, Father God, and you, you are the one who gives us what we need each and every day. Father God, I pray this day that you will be with each and every person who is on our arise list, Lord God. Touch their bodies, touch their hearts, and touch their minds, Lord God. Father God, we pray your continued, continued blessings be upon our pastor and his family, our pastor emeritus and his family, Lord God. Father, as we go throughout this season of life, I pray that you would just give each and every person what they need, Lord God. Some need a financial blessing, and we pray that you would just fill their barns and let their cupboards be overflowing, Lord God. Some of us just need an emotional blessing, Lord God, to have someone smile at us and to say, how you doing today? So I pray that they will get that phone call that they need, Lord God. Then some of us just need to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, just being able to wake up and recognize myself and dress myself and go about doing your work on this day. So, Lord God, we take none of these things for granted, nor do we take them lightly. We just take it that we can, we are grateful that we can come into your throne room and give you all the glory, all the honor, and all all the praise. It is in the name of Jesus that we send this prayer up to you and we say amen, amen, and amen. Here are the upcoming events at MJBC. Don't forget to refuel with the pastor every Wednesday at 12 noon. Join us every Wednesday at 7 p.m. for WOW service which is also called Worship on Wednesday. The Mount Jesuit Christian School presents Double Good Popcorn online fundraisers, March the 7th through the 10th. The fundraiser will help us raise funds to purchase supplies for the STEAM art program. For more information, please contact Sister Mina Pearson. The Usher Ministry will host their virtual anniversary fellowship on Saturday, March the 12th, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. For more information, please contact Sister Marlene Turner. Mount Jezreel, throughout the week, we want you to stay connected with us by subscribing to our YouTube channel as well as Facebook and Instagram. Have a wonderful week. Hey, Mount Jezreel, it's giving time. I want you to take this time to repeat after me. I give because I love God. I give because I trust God. I give because I'm obedient to the word, the will, and the work of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Mount Jezreel, there are five ways in which you can give. They're on the screen before you. You can give by way of online at www.mountjezreel.com. And you can click the giving tab and it will direct you to our online giving. Or you can give by way of bill pay where you give through your financial banking institution and the gifts will be sent directly to our church. You can go to your mobile device and give by way of Givelify and that is safe and secure. You can mail your gifts to the church office or you can give by dropping your gifts off at the church office Monday through Friday. Our church address is 420 University Boulevard East, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20901. Come on, let's give at this moment. We are asking God to bless every giver and every gift, every seed and every sower, every tithe and every tither. Bless them 100-fold. Let's give unto the Lord at this time. Come on, everybody, clap your hands. Hallelujah. In the morning when I wake up, and I will sing my praise unto you, my Lord. I will shout and dance to you. 
For you have been my hell on another level. Come on. Hey, hey, hey. my God is good, oh. And I will sing my praise unto you, my Lord. I will shout and dance to you, for you have been my hell on another level. Come on. Hey, my God is good, oh.
Father, we worship you. For you alone are worthy of all the praise. We bless your name in this place. We lift you. Say, here's, here's my worship, oh. all of my worship, all of my worship, all of my worship, worship. worship. and we here's say, my worship, we present to you, Lord, worship. we lay it at your feet. We lift our voice to you.
Sons Israel, as we continue in our series, Living a Life of Faith, I want to call your attention to Genesis chapter 16. Genesis chapter 16, I'll commence reading at verse 1, and I will conclude at verse 16. Genesis chapter 1, I'll commence reading at verse 1, and I will conclude at verse 16, and it is my prayer that this series has been a blessing to you as we continue our trek through Genesis chapter 25. It's my prayer that you see the faith in the life of Abram that is fortifying and pushing your faith in you as God deals with him and as God speaks to you. Verse number one, reading from the New Living Translation of the Hebrew text, the Bible reads thusly. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had not been able to bear children for him. But she had an Egyptian servant named Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, The Lord has prevented me from having children. Go and sleep with my servant. Perhaps I can have children through her. And Abram agreed with Sarai's proposal. So Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar the Egyptian servant, and gave her to Abram as a wife. This happened ten years after Abram had settled in the land of Canaan. So Abram had sexual relations with Hagar, and she became pregnant. But when Hagar knew she was pregnant, she began to treat her mistress, Sarai, with contempt. Then Sarai said to Abram, This is all your fault. I put my servant into your arms, but now that she's pregnant, she treats me with contempt. The Lord will show who's wrong, you or me. Abram replied, look, she is your servant, so deal with her as you see fit. Then Sarai treated Hagar so harshly that she finally ran away. The angel of the Lord found Hagar beside a spring of water in the wilderness along the road to Shur. The angel said to her, Hagar, Sarai's servant, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she replied. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her authority. Then he added, I will give you more descendants than you can count. The angel also said, you are now pregnant and will give birth to a son. You are to name him Ishmael, which means God hears. For the Lord has heard your cry of distress. This son of yours will be a wild man, as untamed as a wild donkey. He will raise his fist against everyone, and everyone will be against him. Yes, he will live in open hostility against all his relatives. Thereafter... Hagar used another name to refer to the Lord who had spoken to her. She said, you are the God who sees me. She also said, have I truly seen the one who sees me? So that well was named Belalahara, which means well of the living one who sees me. It can still be found between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar gave Abram a son. Abram named him Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Ishmael was born. The word of God for the people of God, we say thanks be unto God. For the moment that is ours to share, I would like to talk with this sermonic thrust in our minds, getting ahead of God. Getting ahead of God. Beloved, as I was reflecting and thinking upon this particular message, my mind journeyed back to an incident that took place a few years ago. It was not long after dropping my children off at their previous school in Ohio that I began a journey to my physician for a scheduled appointment. Let, let me share with you, Mount Jezreel, that I am one who always goes to the doctor. 
If I get a paper cut, I want to know if it's going to heal and what medications I need to put on it. So I expeditiously run to the doctor. This particular day as I was journeying to the doctor's office, the skies were blue and beautiful clouds looked like feathered pillows adorning the sky and the sun was so radiant and the good part about it was traffic was moving gracefully. It was as if everyone in the city was on one accord with their various destinations and were trying to get to where they needed to be on time in a quick, fast, safe, and in a hurry type of fashion. With this vivid picture coming back in my mind, I recognized and realized that I was in a place that I knew and I had traveled so many times that I knew where I was going in my mind. I traveled northbound Highway 75. I took my normal 52B exit heading toward a little small town called Eaton on the 35 connector in Dayton, Ohio. We're moving along with clear intentions to a small suburban city called Trotwood as my final destination where my doctor's office was. Driving, beloved, is therapeutic for me. In fact, all of the vehicles that I have owned have been nicknamed Gethsemane. It's the place where I go to talk to God, cry out to God, spend some time with God. When I'm driving, if I'm not listening to the music of old, those classics that I've shared with you before, I am driving uh, in tune and in touch and in conversation with the God of my salvation. Now as I'm driving and it's therapeutic, I'm also paying attention to what's behind me and I'm glancing back to make sure that as I'm moving along uh, quickly that there are no law enforcement coming up behind me. But now let me hasten to say that although I lived in this part of the country for 10 years, 10 years, 10 years. Years. I'm reasonably familiar with the area and the terrain. I've become accustomed to knowing where I'm going and how I'm going to get there. But yet, this particular day, something got the best of me. And as I was driving, I missed a few exits and ended up making a few mistakes that I mismanaged and misjudged where I was trying to go, and y'all, I was off course. So what do you do in a moment like that? You press the button on your navigational system in which I had my doctor's office saved just in case a day like this happened, and I allow Claire to give me turn-by-turn -turn directions to get me back on track. And As Claire begins to speak, I had to speed up a little faster because this particular physician's office uh, had uh, a disclaimer that if you were late five minutes, then your appointment would be canceled and rescheduled without your consent. So I engaged Claire and Claire began to give me turn-by-turn -turn directions to get me back on track and ultimately to get me to my doctor's office on time. It occurred to me, child of God, that as I was driving and as this recollection came back to my mind that most of us, if not all of us, are guilty of trying to go somewhere without the navigational directing that God so freely provides. All of us have made decisions and plans without inviting God and end up getting ahead of God. We get out of his will and many times in his way and it's always a bad idea to try to accomplish God's plan in your own way and in your own timing. 
God's plans come complete with his method and his timing. And when we try to take matters into our own hand without failure, we mess up everything. This, I contend, is exactly what happens in this narrative that I read in Genesis chapter 16, verses 1 through 16 with Abram and Sarai. This is exactly what they did. Though God had promised Abram a son, God never told Abram when, and he didn't tell him how, because sometimes God does not give us all the information we think we need to follow him and this may be because God wants to direct us to our destinations and without our trying to get ahead of him from this next biblical episode in this life and journey of Abram it is my contention that we need to know whenever we get ahead of God that trouble is sure to come and some developments may surely occur that may not want that we may not want to face notice if you will abram and sarai get ahead of god and when you and i get ahead of god child of god we have to understand first of all that it will create some problems that that's that's what i notice right here that when we get ahead of god it will create some problems as we listen carefully and read the narrative this couple even with the best of intentions made an ill-advised move that clearly created some problems the problems they created are numerous the first of which is that Abram here it is the first problem in getting ahead of God uh, Abram child of God is listening to his wife Write, write that down. He's listening to his wife, comma, and not God. Write, write that down. Make sure you get that. It created some problems for them. And the first problem is he listened to his wife and not God. H hold on, child of God, and don't get mad at me yet. Let me clarify that a man and a woman, especially who are married, especially who are married or are in a relationship and seriously considering marriage ought to converse with one another. That's not what I'm saying. And they ought to talk to each other. That's what I'm saying. They, they, they have to converse and talk with each other. But on the other hand, as people of faith, don't miss this, and a believer in God, yes, talk to your spouse love your spouse, respect your spouse, and consult with your spouse, but don't listen to your spouse, especially when your spouse is telling you to do something that directly contradicts what God has already said. Let me say that again. As people of faith and believers in God, yes, talk to your spouse. Yes, love your spouse. Yes, respect your spouse. Yes, consult with your spouse. But do not listen to your spouse, especially when your spouse is telling you to do something that directly contradicts what God has already said. Abram's first plain and visible problem is he's listening to wrong counsel and is headed in the wrong direction because he's listening to the wrong voice. You will always make a mistake whenever you listen to the one you love over what God says. Doesn't matter what the facts may suggest, God knows the plan. God knows the pace and God knows the process. Write that down. Please don't miss this child of God. God knows the plan. God knows the pace. God knows the process and also add and God knows the place 
And if we're not careful, we become so accustomed to hearing what our loved one says that we may wind up honoring them more than we honor God. Make what God says the priority and the pleasure of your life. Any other counsel will surely cause delays, do damage, and may destroy your life. And whether it's your mother or father, brother or sister, husband or wife, the problem led to another problem because he was listening to ill-advised advice. The unwisely involved someone else into their immature an impatient scheme. Notice how getting ahead of God creates the domino effect, if you will. As soon as the first one tips over, the rest just easily fall down too. Abram's wife suggests that he become intimate with her maiden, Hagar, who was young and pretty and could bear children. So Abram, and without consulting the God who had been directing him all along, agrees with her proposal and goes into Hagar's apartment tent and she becomes pregnant with a little boy. It was seen since Sarai conjured up this plan that once the baby was born, since the child was thought to be a surrogate for her since she couldn't have children, that Sarai would be okay with this new kid in their family. Oh, but no. Sarai is in her feelings. And begins to sense that Hagar was looking at her with contempt. And because of that, she began treating her meanly. She had to go. Now, there comes even more problems. Hagar, a new mother, and her son Ishmael, an infant baby, are forced out and left to make it on their own. Hagar is not happy with the developments. And then the angel of the Lord comes to her and tells her, to go back home to Abram and Sarah's house and be submissive. Wow. She's being divinely sent back to the place where she has been put out. Now, if that wasn't a problem for Hagar, then it certainly is a problem for me. How many of us would be willing to return to the very place where we're being abused, misused, rejected, and disrespected. That's a big pill to swallow any way you look at it. And all I'm trying to say, child of God, and I don't want you to miss it, is whenever you get ahead of God, you're going to create some problems. But there's more to this story. Because whenever we get ahead of God and start creating problems, we also contribute to our pain. It doesn't take long to begin to recognize the host of pain that surfaces in this narrative as a result of this misstep. Sarah is already hurting because she is now 75 plus years old and her body is apparently changing. She doesn't feel like the fine young woman of her youth and not even that, she was at 65 when Abram and her first came on the scene. So the delay of God is messing with her. Abram may have been feeling a bit sorrow and pain himself since he is now 85 and hasn't felt aroused like he once did. So this opening conversation gives us a hint that both Abram and Sarah are in as minimum emotional pain. But then there's Sarah's compounded pain with Hagar looks at her with contempt. Verse 4. Then we see Hagar's pain when she has to leave and try to figure out how she's going to make it on her own. The thought of it brings her to tears. Verse 6. So she's in pain. Not to consider the welfare of her infant son who while a baby can sense the disturb in his mother's embrace and in her song, it is indisputably clear. Whenever you get ahead of God, 
you're headed for trouble and will create some problems, but you're also going to contribute to our pain. And may I suggest to us, child of God, that we must not be too quick to curse pain. God has ingeniously introduced pain into the human equation to alert us that something is wrong. Thereby, pain then becomes a wonderful opportunity to insert and introduce critical actions to become about necessary change. The pain that surfaces in the text is a picture of the nature of sin in the world. What you think or what you're considering may sound like a good idea, but when it's all said and done, sin will take you farther than you want to go. It will keep you longer than you want to stay, and it will cost you more than you're willing to pay. I got to repeat that again because somebody dozed off on me. Sin will take you farther than you want to go. It will keep you longer than you want to stay, and it will cost you more than you're able to pay. How then do I overcome the problems that have created the pain that I've caused? There's only one way to overcome this kind of miscalculation by any one of us. As we look at this text in this final analysis, we can resolve they still have a cause to praise. What? Oh, yes, child of God is there. Did you not notice the agent that God used to reorient them in this narrative? It's the same agent that God uses throughout human history. This is not just an agent to be more specific. It's an angelic agent who arrives on the scene to bring Hagar comfort. If you know anything about angels in both Hebrew and Greek, Angels are messengers. But notice the angel is unnamed. And whenever unnamed messengers are noted in the Bible, it is not the messenger that is important, but the message. The message that the angel routinely brings is nothing but the word of God. The angel calls Hagar by name. I could shout on that alone. Because it is so refreshing to know that God knows where she is, finds her where she is, and speaks to her where she is. Which lets me know that if God knows where she is, finds her where she is, and speaks to her where she is, then certainly God knows where I am, can find me where I am am and can speak to me where I am and the good news is whenever God comes to where you are to speak to you where you are and to share with you what he has to share with you where you are he's just giving you a word of revelation that he's already said and that's why you can praise him because he's already told you that the Lord is your light and your salvation you don't have to fear he's already told you fret not thyself because of evildoers neither be thou envious of workers of iniquity for they soon shall be cut down he's already told you that the Lord is your shepherd you don't have to want he's already told you surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever ever 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 he's already told you weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning and I'm grateful to know that God can find me where I am he can speak to me where I am and he can come to me where I am angel calls hey God the con co-conspirator in Abram and Sarai's crime and sends her back to the place where she has experienced abuse and misuse don't miss it hey God sent her back Angel sent her back to the promise. Don't miss this because the sense of the protagonist has changed. Hagar has to go back to the word of God. She named the boy Ishmael. 
which literally means God hears. I like that. One writer says, God hears or listens to your affliction. Here lies the shout. Though Abram got ahead of God, and though Ishmael is not the promised child, that God still blessed Hagar and Abram by letting Ishmael live. I'm about to give God some praise right there because when I look back over my life, there are some things I have done to manipulate the hand of God and get ahead of God, yet God should have taken stuff from me, but yet he had mercy to hold from me what I deserve and grace to give me what I really didn't deserve. I'm about to pull my hair out right here. Let me preach this like I feel it, that there are some times where I didn't dot the I across the T. There are some times where I had some missteps and some mishaps. There are some times when I tried to manipulate the hand of God and treat God like my cosmic bellhop who hopscotches down from glory to give me what I need and then I acted as if I did it on my own and I got ahead of God and got out of his will and got in his way but yet thanks be unto God that through all that I did myself all the mistakes and mess ups I caused myself that God didn't take stuff from me he had mercy to hold me from what I deserve and grace to give me what I really didn't deserve and I'm thankful on this morning y'all because when I look back over my life I can end just by saying amazing grace shall be my song of praise for it was grace that brought my liberty I don't know why he came to love me so but y'all he looked beyond my faults to see my needs have a good morning y'all may the Lord bless you're real good but is there anybody out here who can say I'm thankful for God's grace amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wrench like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see through many dangers yes Lord toils and snares I've already come for grace has brought me safe thus far and grace shall lead me on hallelujah hallelujah don't you dare get ahead of God don't you dare get ahead of God yes getting ahead of God will create some problems it will contribute some some pain but you still have cause to praise because what should have killed you, God held back from you. Y'all, we should have been gone a long time ago. Because we premeditatively did some things against God. Oh yeah, we dressed for it. We ironed our clothes. We talked ourselves in the mirror about what we were going to do when we got there and how we were going to do it. We told ourselves how many cups we were going to have. We, 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 we shouted about how we were going to float off the Richter scale. You, you read between the lines. And yet you got in your car, drove yourself back home, didn't get a ticket, didn't wreck the car, didn't fall asleep behind the wheel. Because God held back from you what? you really deserve because he had grace on you so just look back over your life take a moment and see the you ought to just tell somebody in your house I'm a trophy on God's showcase of grace that when you see me you see what grace looks like I ain't perfect I, I'm, I'm not going to even act like I was but I thank God that he saved me. 
and he had grace on me. There's someone who's listening to me right now. There are some numbers that have come up before you. There is a website right before you. You're saying, look, Pastor, I, I have, I've messed up. I missed the mark. I want to make things right with God. I, I really, I really want to, to confess my, my sins to God. Let, let's, let's do this together. Everybody who's, who's listening, I, I want you to pray this prayer with me. It's the prayer of salvation. Repeat after me. God, I confess my sins. I recognize I'm a sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. I know you sent your son to die for me. And you raised him up that I may have eternal life. Thank you, kind Father. Now come into my heart. Take control of my life. Guide and guard me by ordering my steps and my stops. By the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. How we bless God for you praying that prayer. If that was your first time praying that prayer, I want you to know that salvation has now come to your dwelling. I need you to contact one of the men and women listed before you on our diaconate ministry so that they can tell you the next steps of discipleship and following our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you're looking for a church, you can contact them as well. Maybe you're saying, I, I really am not ready to talk to someone or I'd rather someone contact me. Go to mountjezreel.com, click the Join Us tab right at the top of our website. Fill out that digital apparatus and right there we'll get your information and in 48 hours we'll contact you. You can even type, I want Christ, I want the Church of Christ on our social media platforms right before you in the chat and our administrators are watching they'll collect your name send you a message to get some further information and we'll contact you more professionally and poignantly so that we can get all that we need to get from you and we can share all that we need to share with you as you join the body of Christ first the church universal and then join the body of Christ called Mount Jezreel this local assembly here it doesn't matter if you're in Maine Missouri, Mississippi or Maryland, we want you to connect with Christ and join this church, we're waiting on you we're praying for you and we know God is not through with you Mount Jezreel how we are so blessed of God for this worship experience and we're grateful to God for his spirit moving through our homes as we have worshipped him in spirit and in truth. Let me share with you my gratitude and my thanks as pastor to those who play integral parts in our worship experience during worship before the camera as well as behind the camera. These persons who serve in ministry are doing a phenomenal job and we say to God be the glory for the great things he's done. It is my prayer that if you're watching now and you're connected to Mount Jezreel Baptist Church that you get connected to one of the ministries within the life of this church to be a blessing not just to this church but to the community as well as this country we are being viewed all over the world thus we are Mount Jezreel worldwide and I'm super excited about all God is doing in the life of our church but I'm also excited about what God is doing right now in these yet to be seen United States of America as we are on the precipice of uh, seeing right before our eyes in 2022 the first African American woman to sit on the Supreme Court as President Biden has now announced uh, his nomination and uh, attorney and uh, judge uh, Katenji Brown Jackson and we are praying that the wheels of justice move forward and that our sister, one of our own, uh, takes this seat in the highest seat and office in the country as it relates to our judicial system. And we're grateful to God for her and we're praying for her. But on the backdrop of this taking place, we also pause as we prepare for our benediction from this worship experience we pause to take time to also lift our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine in prayer that peace may abide and that Russia uh, and all of those who are uh, allying against them and those who are coming against Ukraine will 
uh, find peace themselves and not turn this into something that it does not need to be. So as we leave from this worship experience, let's look to the Lord, our God, in prayer. O oh, eternal God, our Father, we pause in this moment to thank you for this worship experience. We give your name glory, honor, and praise for all that has transpired. We bless your name, God, for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, our hands and hearts have felt. We pray now, God, for your spirit to continue to rule and reign within our lives. We ask, God, that you be with us in the days to come, that we Feel your presence with us every step of the way. We praise your name for every element of worship that has taken place, that it may be a sweet-smelling savor to your nostril. We pray, God, as we faith forward, that our faith be strengthened and fortified to do that which you're calling us to do, to step out and take risk, to do things that seem impossible to us, but by you all things are possible. Now, eternal God, of whose absolute power and infinite intelligence uh, the whole universe has come into being, we confess to you, God, that we have not been as neighborly as we should. We have lived out of selfish impulses rather than sacrificial love. We now ask, God, that your mighty hand be with the children of yours in the nation of the Ukraine. We pray, God, for your protection around them, that you be their refuge and their strength. Uphold them in courage and leaven them with hope and fill them with an allegiance to you that surmounts hatred for those in the invasion force. We pray, God, even for Putin, that transformation results in his life and lasting peace come to his dwelling. May the people of Russia know your presence and guidance as well. Protect them in their work. We pray God that you keep all of us remove all conflict and allow it to flow with love as we all move forward as a world in which you created. We love you guy, and we praise your name guide the leaders of these United States of America. Give them wisdom. Give them patience. Saturate them with love. That we may be beacon lights to others of who you are. And we give you thanks and we give you glory. Now may the grace of our Lord and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us now until the day we see Jesus Christ face to face. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we all shout, Amen. God bless you, Mount Jezreel. No pastor loves you, and it's nothing you can do about it.